Before we get into today's game, I want to talk about the sponsors for my channel. Card Conduit is the best way to sell your unused magic cards. Whether you've got a box of unsorted bulk, or a complete and alphabetized set, there's a great option for everyone. With a payout averaging 19% better than using any one buy list, and that's after fees are applied, you can rest assured you'll get the best bang for your buck. If you're a skeptic like me, their easy customer service and detailed reports make the whole interaction transparent and safe. And if you use the affiliate link in the description below, or the promo code MTGMUDSTA, you'll save 10% off their fees. And 401 Games, Canada's one-stop shop for trading cards, board games, and hobby supplies. Not to mention an easy-to-use and great online buy list. And if you use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, your first purchase of MTG Sealed and Singles will be 5% off. And Dragon Shield, the strongest sleeves for your strongest deck. So be sure to use the code MUDSTA or the affiliate link down below to save 5% on your next order. Before we get into today's game, just like the other pre-con, I really want to thank 401 Games and Dragon Shield. 401 Games sent us these decks to play and they got them to us in lickety split time and Dragon Shield provided us with these adorable sleeves which look so good on camera. And also, I want to thank my Patreon shoutout for today and that's Amy. Thanks Amy for supporting me through Patreon. In this pre-con game, Corwin is playing the Odd Acorn Gang keeping Swamp, Wolf Willow Haven, Talisman of Resilience, Forest, Arcane Signet, Beastmaster Ascension, and Scurry of Squirrels. I am playing Arthur Marigold Knight, keeping Rapid Augmentor, Thopter Engine, Loyal Warhound, Path of Ancestry, Plains, Calamity of Cinders, and a Mind Stone. David is playing Wild Seer Scouring Maw, keeping a Raging Ravine, a Prosperous Bandit, Starstorm, Three Mountains, and Explore. Fred's got the dapper Mr. Foxglove, keeping Thriving Heath, Plains, Brushland, Soul Ring, Lord of the Third Path, Secret Rendezvous, and perch protection. Corwin wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a swamp. I play a tap path of ancestry. David plays a tap raging ravine, passing to Fred. Fred plays a thriving heath which comes in tapped, and he names blue as its second color. Corwin's got a forest return and casts arcane signet. I follow Corwin's example, playing a Plains, and casting Azorius Signet, and passing. David draws, plays a Mountain, and casts Explorer, drawing again. He then plays a Forest for a second land for turn, and passes. Fred draws, and plays a Plains, tapping one for a Soul Ring. He then casts Lorne of the Third Path, who comes in, and destroys Corwin's Arcane Signet. Corwin's got a Swamp for turn, and then casts Wolf Willow Haven on his untapped Swamp. He's then able to tap the Swamp for 2 mana, to cast Talisman of Resilience. I draw and play a Loyal Warhound, going to find a Plains. I then play a Plains from my hand as my land for turn, and cast Mindstone and pass to David. David draws and plays a Mountain. He ramps as well with a Cultivate, finding a forest into play, and one into his hand. He passes to Fred after that. Fred draws and plays a Brushland. He's got enough for Mr. Foxglove, and once he resolves, moves to combat. He swings Lorne at David for two, and passes to Corwin after that. Corwin's turn is quite quick as he draws, casts Scurry of Squirrels, and passes. I draw and cast Arthur, and go to combat. I miss the fact that Arthur has haste on him, so I only swing the Loyal Warhound at David, hitting him for 3, and passing after that. David draws and plays a Mountain. He joins the Soul Ring Club, and then taps out to cast Wild Seer, and passes to Fred. Fred's got a Terramorphic Expanse return, and he goes to combat. He swings Mr. Foxglove at Corwin, and since he has more cards in hand, is able to put a Colonian Hydra into play for free. Mr. Foxglove then connects with Corwin taking 3 and Fred gaining 3, and Fred then tries to patch things up with Corwin by casting Secret Rendezvous, so they both draw 3. Fred then casts an Arcane Signet, and sacrifices the Terramorphic Expanse, searching for a basic while passing. Corwin plays a Woodland Cemetery, and pays 5 for the Odd Acorn Gang. 
Going to combat, Fred offers to take the hit from the scurry of swirls without blocking, so Corwin swings it at him, making two myriad tokens at David and I. David and I block one of them, but take a hit from the copy, and Corwin gets to put three plus one plus one counters onto the scurry of swirls. He also gets to draw three from the acorn gang seeing three squirrels connecting. I draw and play Temple of Epiphany, scrying one. I then cast a Thopter Engineer and make a Thopter as it comes in. I then swing Arthur and the Thopter token at Corwin, and I look at my top six, putting out Curiosity Crafter. Corwin then blocks with the odd acorn gang and Arthur gets taken out, but I still deal one from the token connecting, and I draw a card. I then move to my second main phase, returning the Curiosity Crafter to my hand, and pass. David's got a mountain for turn, and he casts Gratuitous Violence, cascading into a Thought Vessel. He follows up with Harmonize, drawing three, and passing. During his end step, Fred taps Lauren so both he and I can draw a card. Fred draws for turn and plays a Temple of Enlightenment. He then casts Coiling Oracle and reveals a card on top, which is Logan River's pull, and puts it to hand. He then goes to combat and swings the Hydra at Corwin and Mr. Foxglove at me, and he gets two on attack triggers. He draws only one card from Mr. Foxglove's trigger, and the Hydra's counter is then doubled, with Corwin taking eight. In his post combat main phase, Fred then casts Tempt with Bunnies, and Corwin and David take the deal while I refuse. They each make a bunny and draw a card, while Fred gets to make three bunnies and draw three cards, and he passes after that. Corwin's got a forest for turn, and he casts Sword of the Squeak, and then Hazel of Rootbloom, which he moves the sword onto as she comes in. Going to combat, he swings the Scurry of Squirrels at me, and the myriad tokens go at David and Fred. I declare no blocks, while David blocks both, and Fred blocks with two bunnies. Corwin does get to draw off the real Scurry connecting, and he puts a plus one plus one counter onto a squirrel. In the meantime, I am also plain cycling an Angel of Ruins to go and find one from my library. With nothing else, Corwin passes. I draw and play a Temple of Enlightenment, scrying one. I cast a Rapid Augmentor and then go to combat. I swing everything at David for three, which he doesn't block, and after combat, I then cast a Rowdy Research, drawing three and passing. David's got a mountain for turn, and he casts Path of Discovery, cascading into Rampant Growth, which he casts to go and grab a forest. David then follows up into Berserker's Onslaught, cascading into Gore Claw. Fred, however, cashes in his Long River's Pull, countering it, and gives me drawing a card, and the Onslaught is then countered, and Gore Claw then resolves and enters. This explores, and David reveals Chaos Warp on top, putting a plus one plus one counter onto Gore Claw. With nothing else, David passes. Fred draws and plays a Plains. He plays out Sunscorch Regent, and then goes to combat. He swings Mr. Foxglove at me, and the Colonian Hydra at David. The Hydra doubles to a 16-16, and Fred draws two from Mr. Foxglove. David and I then both take the hits, with Fred gaining some life from Lifelink, and he passes to Corwin. Corwin plays a Veridescent Bog, and then taps Hazel, losing two, and his bunnies, to help cast Garuk, Cursed Huntsman. Fred gets a counter on the Sunscorch Regent, and gains a life, and once Garuk resolves, Corwin downticks him to take out the Colonian Hydra, and then draws a card. Corwin then follows up with an Honored Dray Leader, which enters with three plus one plus one counters, and he goes to combat. He swings the Scurry of Squirrels at David, and the two Myriad copies at Fred and I. David blocks the Wild Seer, and Fred blocks the Sunscorch Regent and a Bunny Token, while I take both. Corwin then gets to put the counters from the Scurries onto Hazel, and then moves through his phases, making a Bunny on his end step thanks to Hazel, and passes. I draw and play a Mountain. I then cast Arthur again, and I go to combat. I swing the Thopter and Augmenter at David, and Arthur goes at Fred. I get my Arthur trigger, putting Zinnia into play and attacking David. Fred blocks Arthur with the Sunscorch Regent, and David then takes seven. 
Afterwards, I put Zinni into my hand as I pass my turn. David draws and plays a game trail which comes in tapped. He goes to combat and swings both of his creatures at Garuk, who Corwin lets get taken out. After combat, David then casts a Star Storm, putting 10 into the X. The board gets wiped completely, and David then passes turn. Fred draws and plays an island. He then plays Tempt with the Discovery, but no one takes him up on the deal. This has Fred getting another island, and he then casts Mr. Foxglove again, and passes to Corwin. Corwin draws and plays a forest. He then casts a Rasta, and follows it up with Bastion of Remembrance. He then equips the sword onto a Rasta, and passes to me. I've got a Sulphur Falls for turn, and then cast Murmuration, followed by Felwar Stone. Going to my end step, I make two Stormcrows from Murmuration, and pass. David plays a Tranquil Thicket, and recasts Wildseer. He then explores a forest to his hand. He then casts an Outpost Siege, and cascades into an Arcane Signet. The Siege then resolves, and he names Khans, and passes. Fred draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Joriel, and then goes to combat. He swings Mr. Foxglove at me, and since he has more cards in hand than I do, puts Body of Knowledge into play off the On Attack trigger. I then chump with a Stormcrow token, and with combat over, Fred then plays Rites of Flourishing. He passes after that. Corwin draws two, and plays a Forest and a Swamp. He casts Nadir's Nightblade, and then follows up with Deadly Dispute, sacrificing the Soldier token to draw two, make a treasure, and drains us for two thanks to the Nightblade and Bastion. Corwin then casts a Chittering Witch, and cashes in his treasures to play Beastmaster Ascension, and we lose another one to the Nightblade. Corwin then passes turn. I draw my two, and play an Atacar Wastes and a Pharaoh's Lake. I then cast Zinnia, and follow her up with Selfless Spirit, paying for the Offspring cost. I then cast a Hanged Executioner with Offspring, and I then move to combat. I swing the Stormcrow at David for two, which he takes. After that, I make three Stormcrows from Murmuration as I move to my end step, and before leaving my end step, David casts Chaos Warp and targets Nadir's Nightblade. This has Corwin shuffling it in, and revealing a Jungle Hollow off the top after shuffling, and as it comes in, he gains one life. David exiles Rootbound Crag to Outpost Siege, and then draws two. He plays the Rootbound Crag from Exile, and then a Force from Hand. He then casts Greater Good, cascading into a Lotus Cobra, which as it enters, gets him an Explore Trigger, and he reveals Bright Clap Badger off of it. He keeps it on top, and then sacrifices Wild Seer to Greater Good, drawing six and discarding three. David then plays a Decimate, targeting Mindstone, Mr. Foxglove, Bastion of Remembrance, and one of Fred's planes. Fred responds by casting Perch Protection, giving David an extra turn, but Fred gets to make some bird tokens, and then all of his stuff phases out. David then follows up by casting Blasphemous Act, and I sacrifice my Selfless Spirit token to make my board indestructible. Sadly, Corrin doesn't have anything to do the same, and his board gets wiped. David then continues his turn by casting Kadama of the East Tree, and then moves to his extra turn. David exiles Big Score to Outpost Siege, and draws for a second turn. He then recasts Wild Seer. He then casts a Primeval Bounty from Hand, which cascades him into Bellow. He continues by playing the Bright Cat Badger we saw, and he then casts Gruul Signet, and gets the Bounty Trigger, putting three counters onto Kadama. Going to combat, with all of his artifacts and enchantments animated with Bellow, David swings them all at Corwin. Corwin dies thanks to Gruduous Violence, and David gets to draw some cards, and passes. Fred phases back in, drawing two, and playing a Razor Verge Thicket and Reliquary Tower. He then plays Hoof Prince of the Stag, and goes to combat. He swings Mr. Foxglove at me, drawing a card, which puts a counter onto the Hoof Prince. He also gets to make a cat token from his second card draw thanks to Joriel. I decide to just take the three, and Fred gains three. Fred then plays Promise of Loyalty after combat. I put a loyalty counter onto Zinnia, David puts one onto Bello, and Fred puts his onto the Body of Knowledge, and the rest of the creatures are then sacrificed. 
After that, Fred casts Tamio, field researcher, and uptakes her, targeting Zinnia and Bello, and passes to me. I draw and go to combat. I swing Zinnia at David to attempt to kill him, but he's ready with a beast within, taking her out. I then follow up by casting Luminous Broodmoth, and then a Junkwinder. And I then make two Stormcrows on my instep. This taps down Bellow and the Body of Knowledge, and we then move to David's turn. David exiles Reliquary Tower, and then draws two. He plays an Exotic Orchard, and then a Mosswort Bridge, gaining six life from the Primeval Bounty. He then casts Wandertail Mentor. This has him exploring, and reveals a tally on the top, and he makes a beast token from Primeval Bounty. He then casts Warstorm Surge. It enters as a 4-4, and triggers itself, dealing 8 to my face because the damage is doubled from gratuitous violence. Not to mention David gets to put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters onto greater good. David then follows it up with a Teapot Slinger, which makes a beast token when it casts it and they both enter with a plus one plus one counter from exploring, and deals a further 16 damage to my face as well, to take me out. David then plays Talisman of Impulse, and Thran Dynamo, the latter of which enters as a creature with a plus one plus one counter, and deals 10 to Fred's face as well. Going to combat, David swings his massive board of animated artifacts and enchantments at Fred, which is easily more than enough to take him out, and he wins the game. Game review time. This game was about an hour and 15 minutes, and it was much faster than the first one, obviously almost by half, because we actually knew what the decks were trying to do, and we knew a lot more of the cards. Going into it, I don't think everyone had time to really study what the decks were about. I mean, you have a clear idea of what they want to do, but overall, it didn't really help that we didn't know what we were doing. That being said, it also added to some of the fun, because you're drawing new cards and playing new stuff and finding interactions you didn't necessarily know were going to happen. I thought that Wildseer was great. It was kind of funny that David cascaded not into other enchantments, unfortunately, but mostly ramp spells, which, you know, does pay off in the end. And it seemed like his deck really exploded as soon as Bellow came out. He had a decent field of enchantments, which, you know, become massive beaters that draw him cards, so that's never bad. Arthur... I don't know. Arthur, compared to Zinnia, is... <sighs> I get what they're trying to go for. It feels almost like a fair version of the first Narset, but it's just not the same. Plus, I missed the first attack. I should have realized it had haste, so that was pretty bad on my part. Although, if you looked at what I hit on the subsequent attack, Curiosity Crafter was the only card. Yes, I would have gone a little bit deeper, but it just didn't feel like I was drawing into anything or going to hit anything relevant. Unfortunately, having to bounce them back to my hand after combat also feels kind of slow. I think I want bigger creatures to be able to cheat out, which is not what the deck really had a focus on. It was more about Offspring, which... The odd Acorn Gang is pretty sweet, and I actually kind of like it a little bit more than Hazel. Hazel feels like it needs to be built around a lot more than it currently is, Whereas the Acorn Gang provides you with reliable ways to draw, which a lot of the creatures are squirrels, means you have a lot of access to draw. With the Scurry of Squirrels out, Corwin was a big threat early on, because he was pumping squirrels, plus getting draw, and it just worked out really well, it seemed like. Unfortunately, things that work out really well mean that you have to get taken out early on, and that's pretty much what happened. In a similar vein, Fred was doing a lot of work early on, with that Mr. Foxglove attack that put out the Colonian Hydra, that is aggressive, and I really like Mr. Foxglove. Both modes are basically relevant whenever you need them to be, and you have so many options with different opponents that you're basically always going to be able to get at least whichever trigger you want, unless you're in one versus one. It just felt really good, having lifelink seems great, and I'm sure there's a few cards like Reconnaissance that you can add to the deck that'll really crank it up and make Mr. Foxglove more powerful. I thought these were fantastic additions, and I'm really, really happy with how they turned out. I'm actually going to build a few of them, so look forward to some of them in the future. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, but it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.